Hello, welcome to Atla YouTube channel. It is a ninth part of a series called Love Abyss. Let's begin. Tracy was telling all of the elders that just as what he said at the table. As all of you want to do business with me. While family heads are all here, let's set the standards. I want you to offer me 30% of your profits, fair enough. One of the head was saying that it can't be possible. Jessica was thinking that he did not care about proving his innocence to others. She thought he would make himself a target after three people were killed. But he seems to have nothing to lose. He doesn't even care to get more enemies. One of the heads said, Tracy, don't you think I will spare you? Tracy said, I don't think so, but I need you to do prove to me that you can do it because words are all empty to me. Then he clicked the button of his system. And then suddenly a blast happened on the backside of ship. All of the guests came into shock. And the head asked, what are you doing, Tracy? Some of the guards came and told the family heads that the engine room at the stern was destroyed. Our ship can't move now. Head was thinking, does Tracy wants to strap us in here forever? Jessica was looking at the blast, and she was thinking if it's real. She was watching towards Tracy, and he was saying to the head that take your time, anyway the ship would not sink immediately. Jessica was thinking that's his true color. He's the cold and hard emperor of the dark world. But she was crying and thinking, why should I be with him, though I know he was far from ordinary. She was trying to escape from the yacht. But Tracy noticed it and grabbed her leg and asked, where are you going Jessica? Don't wander off or you will fall overboard. Jessica said don't look at me like that. And stop pretending that you care about me. He asked you think I'm pretending? It's all thanks to you to help us to find their purpose so fast. Because I used you as a bit. But I knew you could do it and I let you go. She said where do I get the feeling that you are trying to save me and to be a hero? He said that's not true. And then he noticed the red spots on her chest. He asked who hurted you. All of the guests at the party were hearing their conversation. And the head was very angry. He said that Tracy is fooling around with his woman. Does he think we are dead? The another head with a silent nature was moving away from him. The family head was saying that a new family leader killed one of his family members. We Cooley family would not acknowledge his identity. The other one said we Aelkin family would not recognize his identity. And then he said with a dangerous and angry look, if you dare to kill us then someone will kill you and your woman. Jessica was scared after hearing this. Tracy replied with a smile that if that's the case, I can't let you go now. Jessica was in fear and thinking that they are not together. The heads were asking, what's the Tracy woman name? Is it Lucy? Jessica was thinking how did they know her name? Tracy said every woman with him is called Lucy. So no one will ever know who you are. That's why you will be safe. Jessica was thinking that she is in danger. Suddenly she felt the pain of the bullet. Tracy said to let him see. Jessica replied no. Tracy asked did Ralph shoot you? She said yes and what's the matter with you too? Tracy replied that Ralph betrayed him. However he will deal with their betrayal as soon as he get back. Tracy said let's move from the yacht to the speedboat. Jessica asked whose speedboats are these? At the ship the head with the silent nature was calling someone but due to the signal blocking. The call can't be connected. He was thinking that, it seems his plan has failed. And then he saw the mercenary controlled by Tracy. He took out few knives and throw it on them. He was praising Tracy that you are making progress. He is the young master of Yamaguchi family, Saikairo O'Hara. Jessica was also asking Tracy who is Saikairo O'Hara. He said I will tell you later. But right now let's go to our own speedboat. Jessica told him that she don't need him to hold her all the way. She can walk by herself. But he said with the concerned voice that you are hurt and it is my fault, so I will compensate you. Jessica was thinking that current Tracy is completely opposite to the Tracy she saw some time before. When he was destroying the ship. At the sea someone came out of the water. And it was none other than David. 
He was pointing his gun towards Tracy. Tracy noticed it. David shot the bullet. Tracy was trying to cover Jessica however bullet hit Tracy. Mercenary were also shocked. Jessica saw the gunman. Tracy fell down due to bullet shot by David. The mercenary was also started firing. Jessica was thinking if the gunman is really David. And because of that Jessica was trying to stop the mercenary. And saying to forget about the gunman. Come down and help your lord. She was thinking that it is a good opportunity to take up the speedboat. But for that, she needed to go down to identify the gunman. Tracy grabbed her hand and said I'm okay, so stay close to me. The bullet just grazed my shoulder. And it's dangerous for you if you don't stay close with me, because someone tried to shot you in the head. Jessica angrily said that originally the gunman was shooting at you. I'm just coming in the way. But well, why are you looking at me like that? Tracy said it's not that important. He ordered his mercenary to take care of the gunman, if he's still at sea. And once you find the gunman, just kill him. Jessica was scared after hearing it. Tracy said you appear to know nothing about what David had done here. You don't know everything about him. Jessica was worried about David, and she was wondering if he is okay. David was drowning in the sea and thinking, why is Tracy here? I should stay calm even if Tracy is here. Reckless actions can help Jessica get out. David was also hurted. David's name came out of Jessica's mouth. Tracy said I need to send you away. Jessica said no there must be diving suits. So I must go down and take a look. But Tracy came closer to her and hit her on the back off her head. She fell unconscious. He grabbed her and then one of the mercenary came towards him and saying, We are in place and ready. Tracy told the family heads to make a quick decision. You are running out of time. Rochester family will take over all forces you have here. The family heads become angry. On the next day, Jessica wake up and found that she's on a board. And her injury is not even hurting that much now. Tracy said you are awake? He was not wearing a shirt and he was holding a fishing rod. After looking at his naked body, Jessica was thinking that something has awakened the call of the wild within her. And you are looking very attractive. He said you have no broken ribs, they are the same as before. It's just cruising so he had put medicine on it, is not that better? She was looking at him in very weird way. He asked why are you looking at me like that? It's me who tore your clothes off. She was thinking why you act so natural. And then she noticed that Tracy also bandaged his shoulder. And then she recalled the scene when the bullet passes through Tracy's shoulder. She asked what are you going to do, because your plan is now failed. He said it's almost done, I got the forces I wanted but there is something. She asked what is that? He replied when they were pulling out, their speedboat was wrecked and he lost contact with his man. So we are stuck here now, she asked what are you going to do now? We are going to start a drifting adventure? And I got some fish for you, he was cooking that fish? She asked you can cook? He said that is not so unusual, she said you are the leader of the Rochester family? Then why are you doing the cooking? He said yes, so if I could not cook myself it would be easy to poison me. She agreed with the statement and said well, you are right. She tasted the fish and it's so yummy. She was blushing and thinking it's fabulous. After a while, she said I have been eating a lot why don't you eat? Are you not hungry? He said I hope you can get enough to eat. She said you don't get to be so nice, though I saved your life, but I don't expect you to repay me. Just don't give me any more trouble, he said actually I don't plan to find you after I got the wrong girl. But I can't forget you because at the moment you saved me, you have not been in deadly danger. You really would not know how desperate I was at that time. Your presence not only saved my life, but also changed it. Jessica was thinking that maybe a small thing for her means something big in his eyes. He must have suffered a lord since childhood. While he was looking at her, Jessica said don't keep looking at me like that. He grabbed her hand. She asked what are you doing? And then he put her hand on his chest. She was blushing and saying you are deep-chested and heavy muscle. 
But why should I touch your chest? She was closing her eyes. But Tracy was saying to look at him. She saw a gunshot wound, and it was shot from that time when she saved Tracy. He said you know how dangerous my situation was at that time? If you had not saved me I must have died at sea. She said I did not realize that but she was still touching his chest. He said are you feeling good by touching my chest? At night the weather is not good, the water was coming inside the yacht. Jessica was trying to close the door. Tracy said just leave it come here and hold on. It's cool in the evening here and don't get wet. But then suddenly she fell on the ground which was filled by water. Due to that she started sneezing. He said you know there is only one blanket on the board. So don't get it wet. Take off your wet clothes and put up the blanket. She was declining and saying I don't want you to see my body. He said well I have already seen it. But why should I discuss this with you? He removed her clothes. She was blushing and then they both covered themselves in the blanket. She was thinking that it is very quiet there. But it's pouring down outside. It seems we are frozen in time. She was peeking at him and thinking he looks really handsome. Why is he the leader of Rochester family? She was wondering about what his story could be. He asked are you interested in me? At that time she said no, but she was really curious about him. Next morning it was a sunny day. She woke up and looking at Tracy. He said you are awake your clothes are dry so get dressed. He threw her clothes towards her. She was trying to catch it, and the blanket fell off. She was angry and blushing and said you did it on purpose. He said it's a nice day today. She was angry and said show me your body. Tracy replied but I have been showing it to you haven't I? And then suddenly she fell off on the ground. Tracy was worried about her, and she was saying it's weird. And I feel dizzy. He checked her temperature and found that she's burning up. She had a fever. In the old memory David was going towards Jessica and asking what are you doing? You are burning up you are sick go back Jessica. I don't need your help. Jessica said no I'm in charge of this case so I have to do things. He said what are you doing is just harming yourself and others. The important thing was listen to your body. Don't try to be tough you're overestimating yourself. And you are a girl you can go easy on yourself. At that time she was thinking, she don't want to act tough. She is just afraid she will lose her way, so she can't stop. She also wants someone's gentleness. In the current time, she wants to drink water. Tracy filled his mouth by water, and giving it to her by mouth-to-mouth -mouth transferring. After a while she woke up and he asked if she still wants water. She was shocked and trying to don't look up. He said don't keep looking at me. I hate to look after you, so don't get sick before me. She was thinking that's ridiculous. How could I know when I get sick? But he should choose to look after me. And if my eyes serve me right? His eyes went red. At night the weather was very cold. Jessica was thinking that Tracy has no shirt. Isn't he feeling cold? And why he looks so sad? She thought a man like him would not be sad and his hands were cold when he gave her water. On the other hand Tracy was thinking about his mom and saying to don't leave him. Then suddenly Jessica came from behind him with a blanket and grabbed him. Tracy said what's wrong? You are not feeling shy, she said don't get me wrong, but if you get sick we will be really in trouble. And I feel good on your side. Her breast was touching Tracy's back. He said you will feel much better behind my back. With a blushy and angry face, she said, Damn it, you pervert. You bastard, I will be right in front of you. But she was not feeling comfortable there. On the next day, Jessica's fever seems to leave her. Tracy said he's glad that she is okay now, and remember to get some warm water. Jessica was thinking if she had not known how cruel he was. She would think he was really a nice guy. Anyway, how many days have passed since they were trapped? although we should still have clothes, food, water, and even fever reducer. Then suddenly a helicopter came towards them. Jessica was thinking that someone is there. It was none other than Seikairo. He said, Tracy, you looks comfortable there. 
The outside is in chaos. Tracy said I'm glad you made it out alive. Saikairo said we all fell into your trap. You worked hard and drew our attention to the birthday party. But your real purpose is to take over Cooley family and Aelkin family from the north. The two families have lost half of their power. And you did not fall into the trap they set up instead, you trapped them. Tracy said because of you I achieved much. Joseph is dead and I have found the mole around me. Tracy said it seems I failed to trap you, otherwise you could not be here with a swagger. Jessica was thinking that it was not easy for me to be here as long as I go back. I can take Rosa away from Tracy. So why do you make trouble here at this point? She was wondering what is Tracy's plan. She asked him what can I do for you? Tracy said with a smile. I don't need your help. Just stay behind me and you will be fine. Saikairo said don't worry I would not do anything because I imagine there must be many men aiming their guns at me under the water. Jessica was shocked after hearing what Switcheroo said. And with the full of anger she said, Tracy you are a liar. We were not trapped here at all. We are just being chased so we can't go back now. Tracy replied you are wrong. We should go home after all is said and done. She said it's a naive behavior. He replied he think it is a good we really have a good life here. With the angry voice she said stop talking nonsense. Saikairo interrupted them and said Aelkin families and Cooley families leader have issued kill orders on both of you. Jessica said it's none of my business. We have nothing to do with each other so why am I wanted? Tracy said you will be fine. Jessica was thinking that she will be okay if she leave him. Saikairo said Miss Lucy and throw a packet towards her. Tracy catch it, and said don't get my woman anything. Jessica recognized it, and said wait a minute, it is the jewelry Rosa lent it to me. I thought I could not find it anymore. Saikairo said it was on the scene where Joseph was shot, so everyone was thinking that whatever happened at the ship was Tracy's doing. Tracy said that's not important, I don't need your help. Saikairo said he just hoped Lady Lucy will feel grateful for that. Tracy was angry and saying to get away from her. Jessica stopped his hand and said don't drop it. I want to return it to Rosa. The bubbles were emerging in the sea, and the mercenary came outside of the water. Jessica was thinking that there are so many people under the water. Tracy you are very cunning. One of the mercenary rise up his thumb and said, Lord we are done. Tracy told it seems my pleasant stay is going to end. Jessica was thinking yes it has come to an end. We will never meet again after we get back. But the time here is really great. Tracy said I will introduce you to the newly promoted head of security. Jessica moved away and said I don't need to know who he is. Tracy smiled and said I will not let you leave. That's all for today video. If you want to know what happened next then. Like and subscribe Atler Animation YouTube channel.